Okay, so Rutscorn, you sent me this image, and I have no idea who is this crazy man. That's Gordon Freeman. <laughs> that is that's Gordon an early Freeman Esquire. version of Gordon Freeman. Yep. I am huh. a space biker. Yeah, that's quite a magnificent beard. You know. Yes, that is the like the first concept of Gordon Freeman. You, have to you know, it looks I can more like a see... physicist. Yeah, that's that's true. Looks more like a physicist. You... Although he could use glasses, glasses and a beard. And can you? But he does look a little bulkier, a little heavier, a little less. You know, a little more like somebody who spends time studying math, and a little less like somebody who spends time at the gym. Than, Alex, than the Gordon it Freeman we've got. Possible for you to kill these with bullets? No. Somehow, like a guy who could resist falling off of a building a little bit more than Gordon Freeman could. Yeah. You know, I think the thing I like about the most about the uh, that concept of Gordon Freeman is that it has zero appeal. It is absolutely unsatisfactory. In the sense that it, 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 there's nothing about it to satisfy anybody. It's an ugly, boxy costume of a guy with a goofy face, a stupid haircut, and just this big old like outdoorsman, like, uh, like not outdoorsman beard, like this sort of Gordon Freeman lumberjack, crazy manifesto <laughs> beard. Yes, he does <laughs> get a look. <laughs> He looks like, like the kind of guy who lives out in the woods and worries about the government spying on you. This is our train. It's like on the one hand, there's a much that are bigger concern in this particular appeal. world. What the like, fuck? And the one hand, they're, they're, built, they're characters who are built to be appealing and that they like their fan servicing. And then there are characters who are built to be like power fantasies, like you want to be this guy. And this guy is just neither. What? Camster, yeah. you all tabbed me in the middle of the end of the episode. No having it. <laughs> you know, okay. We're not so, Camster just bought me something Did on Steam and that popped up with it. No, it's it's fine, I think. Did it break the recording? <laughs> oh, good, Damn, good. I, I think it's fine. Get out of here, I'm gonna save here. Just I in didn't case. do anything. <laughs> this is what happens to you if you resist. Camster, it has your name on it, you lying bastard! <laughs> Or if you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, quit your what crying, if Alex. It's this? not like you it's not like you knew him. Don't judge other people's <laughs> life choices. What, what if, if you wanted voluntary? to be a stalker? Yeah. With any luck, we Don't judge well him, outside. you monster. What if it has like what if it's a really crappy job hours wise, but it comes with some fantastic <laughs> perks? Like what if like free childcare and like 401k and yeah. Let's hope the worst is over. And maybe I that thing strapped to his stars. face is like... Free manicures for their... And maybe that thing strapped um, to his face is like a Game Boy. And he okay, just plays that it all day. a little bit cheap. What, what's that? Oh my god. The, the lack of V-Sync. I don't know how this is going to look in the recording, but the lack of V-Sync oh here god. makes it look like whenever the screen is shaking, like... It's just like oscillating. Brace yourself. Grab her butt. Oh, don't, I'm... Don't do that. Well, what else could you do? She's like, brace yourself, and then she turns and grabs the only thing that could possibly be braced. <laughs> I, yeah, but like, if you grab the butt, you're just gonna this slide off backwards. This guy's very unhappy about his Game Boy being shut off. I do like this moment, though, where it goes from like, she's like really sympathetic towards them to being absolutely repulsed and horrified, and they actually sell that, which is kind of impressive. Yes! Oh man, do they sell it? This was a, this was my first time through the game. This was actually an emotional moment when she comes in here and leans on the wall. I felt the same way, and I thought it was amazing that I got out of that train. And I was like, "Whoa, that was really something!" And then she came in and leaned on the wall just in the way that I would want to lean on the wall, and I was like, "How oh, did the game know?" It's okay, so maybe amazing. maybe that's one of the things that actually they improved with Alex this time around, or at least in the DLC in general. Yeah. Where in the first game, Alex was like, a, Yo, dude, you're so cool. I love you. I'm your fanboy. You're awesome. And here she's sort of like, because Gordon Freeman doesn't Gordon Freeman doesn't talk, she becomes the player's emotional rock. She reflects what the yes. player is experiencing. Also, that lean against the wall 
is amazing. Like, I've never seen it. Like, that's something you can do in real life, but they never try and show... Like, games ha are very bad at showing that sort of body language. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just imagining, like, a, the Skyrim version of that today, where they, like, oh. they're like, hold on, I need to relax, and they walk around and they kind of turn 360 degrees, and then they align their back perfectly with the wall, and they lean back and fold their leg and then fold their arms as discrete motions. Yes, and they're actually so leaning on like, they start talking and on they, like, like lift their a hand corpse. off of their arm and put it back down. <laughs> yeah, and so then the other and thing, like an interesting segment. The yeah, if the other thing was sort of proto uh, proto portal, this is kind of proto Left 4 Dead. Oh, well, yeah. it's interesting because you don't even have a gun here. Yeah, and this is the part where I thought that was starting to get a little old. Like, the not having a gun yeah. part specifically was starting to get a little yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, I don't have a gun. How am I supposed to fight these guys? I have the orange portal gun. And I was like, oh, I'm supposed to orange throw physics gun? objects? And then it was like, I felt like a, I was rooting through the garbage. I felt like a hobo. Oh, a brick! Well, it's funny how in Ravenholm, I will in fairness, go Ravenholm the was with one buzzsaw. But when you make it so that I can't shoot them... I can't see a thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then it feels like this horrible obligation. Well, no, I think part of that was that in Ravenholm you had a buzzsaw, and it was like picking up this buzzsaw and cutting people-sized things in half. Whereas here it's like picking up an entire barrel to fire at a stupid head crab. Oh, man. That, you know, it jumped in the corner, and now I gotta wait for it to come out. And the projectiles don't move at the speed of thought, like the buzz saws, so there's this kind of hmm. annoying lack of punchiness. Well, we'll not okay, I have way. to say I kinda love I kinda love what Josh did just did, because that was so clearly designed yeah. to be exactly what they wanted yeah. you to do. <laughs> That's yes. just really cool. Who put a ladder in the ductwork? I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. A ladder in the ductwork. <laughs> Maybe that's a thing in real life, but I've never seen or heard of it, and it feels silly. There's an achievement for going gun, through this entire go. episode firing Oops. only one bullet. And well. you realize, oh wow, what do they give you the one bullet for? You, oh. need, to, you need to fire a bullet to leave this room. So, Joey, basically it means you can't ever shoot anybody. I've never like done it. Like Josh demonstrated, you need to pick up the shotgun and accidentally fire it into the wall. <laughs> That's the only there way out of the room. is fast weapon switch. There it is. Okay. Now I can do it by hitting one key. Yeah, Josh, you should just exhaust all of your shotgun shells. Like shooting at random, plinking at random targets. Yes, use the shotgun to kill the padlock and not the pistol, because of course that makes sense. Well, I didn't have the pistol. Where's the power thing for this place? It should be lit up. You should look for a couple lights in the dark. It's just that. That's the powered lock that won't open. Oh, here we go. I, I saw it a box. second ago, but I can't give you directions. There we go. Yep. Just headbutt that electricity with your vacant Wait. eyes. Wait. So, the, the power lock works when the power's off, but you turn the power on and the power lock opens? Yes. <laughs> Why, Chris? <laughs> okay. Are you saying that as if you think oh, it's unreasonable? Right. See, I think I think video games like people don't like it either way. They think it's stupid if the door is open when the power's off and closed when the power's on, and they think it's stupid yeah. if the door is closed when the power's on and open when it's off. Give me, give me that. The thing. point is that a door should twice. not. I don't actually. Know. Yeah. Well, the point is that the door should not change its state based on the power <laughs> because it's easy to subvert the door then because then you just need to change the, hey, what buddy. the power is doing How's it going? and Look. defeats the purpose of having a locked door. Oh, right. This is the one that doesn't have the separate flashlight meter. That doesn't happen until episode two. Really? They added that. Oh. I thought they changed that. Yeah, yeah. No, in, the, in episode two, they, they changed it so the flashlight was a separate power meter from everything else. So you didn't exhaust your flashlight right. power while swimming or 
or sprinting. sprinting. That always pissed me off. They, they, oh, I sprinted too much. Now I can't use the flashlight. Like what? Yeah. What kind of madness is or this? Or I've used the flashlight too much. Now I can't sprint. I use the flashlight too much. Now I I can't hold my breath underwater. Like it, it's the sort of thing where if you can only justify it as like a contrivance of the world and not as a game mechanic, you probably shouldn't make it so that it turns out it is that way. Or don't make it, don't make situations where I'll need, where I'll, where that will happen. Uh, but Plenty yeah, they uncoupled. definitely pro strat for this area. Yeah, and plus it's super fun and reward. And this is the game training you, you know, Half-Life games are all about training you. They spend all their time training you. It's training you to create light and things like that, um, so that you're ready for the next section where it throws you into the long dark. So this was an interesting, this was a new, uh, addition to the game. Was these, uh, thank you, Alex. Zombine, right? Zombines. Yeah. Really? Because I would have called them combombines or combombies. Yeah, that's better. Combombies. I really hope that in all of your errant single videos, all agree that that is not the case. For no Chris. reason. And no explanation. Well, that was a combombi right there. That was a combombi. The so, long dark. I know what you're talking about. This is gonna suck. Yeah, we're gonna have several episodes of us staring at a black screen going, I wonder how Josh is doing. Yeah, it had a bomb. <laughs> how you doing, Com Alex? Bomb zombie. Uh, okay, that's cool. Right. <laughs> what is <laughs> she doing? She <laughs> changes her oh, mind. Go, go. <laughs> She's just putting the wall like, get on the floor! Get on the floor! I thought she was just like she failed her morale check and decided to run. And my pistol is unlimited your ammo. Me, me. Oh. Yay! <laughs> nice punt. That was perfect. Okay, nice so. punt. It said at the bottom. You really dodged a bullet there, Josh, because the grenade really was not gonna hit you until the last minute there. You really clinched it. <laughs> Just to, just to prove that Josh is not the only screw-up on the team, I forget to start the timer when we started this episode, so I have no idea how long we've been going, so I wonder how long this episode will be. <laughs> it hasn't been 20 minutes I'm gonna say we've been going for 10 minutes. 12 minutes. Yeah, it hasn't been 20. Yeah, but when Josh starts failing, time dilates a lot, and it becomes very hard to tell how long things oh. have been. And the more he dies, the less I know what time it is. Let's punk cars to victory. I like how I can... I, this thing has the physical force to punt a car, but it can't open a door. That door was made specifically to keep the cars out. That's why you don't see any cars on the other side of the door. Duh. This is how we could tell that Josh oh, didn't get his Yay. theoretical video game physics. This is the game where they changed the, the weapon reload. They really sped up the pistol reload, and I realize this is super trivial and most people didn't notice, but it was a lot faster and it was this real quick, real quick click 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 motion and then they retrofitted it back into half-life 2 and that felt so weird to me i was like what all of a sudden going back and playing that game it's like a the pistol was no different all right okay so you gotta do that to open the door back here and all these guys show up it, it is weird how there's no original half-life 2 right like the only Half-Life yeah. you can get is now on the new engine with the new assets. Yeah, like you well, can't play the, the game as it same, existed. But they changed on... some of the shaders and stuff. Like, I would love if you could play the game as it existed on day one. 
Like, that would be interesting to me. Black head crab. That box is there to draw your eyes so the black head crab bites you in the butt. The dev commentary even says it, that's exactly why they did that. That is when the Valve Magician uses its powers for evil. Players, you're so predictable. Oh. Can you kill bad guys All right. with health? We got, you really are so predictable. We got barrels. Ha <laughs> ha, antlions! Oh my god, yeah. the antlions. You position a car peripheral to where they come out. <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh god, somebody parked a car too close. Yes. Here, here's the problem, do, is that do, do. this entire episode is full of the obnoxious segments of Half-Life 2. <laughs> here's the part where you turn a wheel very slowly. And here's the part, although... Did Half-Life 2 have any really dark stuff where you couldn't see what was going on? I don't think so. Uh, this you know, is the a new thing for was, the game. Uh, you know what? Raven Raven home. And the caves. Yeah, okay. So. That's true, I think yeah, the mines. out of ten people will answer the same thing here. Let's test this out. Josh, what's the worst part of Half-Life 2? Uh... For me, it's the mines. Hmm. The mines. I always skip the mines. Yeah, the mines no feel right, like you're no, going no too clip, far. Right clip, I, no clip right through the mines. Never a second thought. Never feel bad. I really feel after okay. leaving Ravenholm, I really want to come out in the train area. I guess, but the, the mines are actually fairly short. I guess I don't know. They are. They are. They're, they're very the short. Are... It's a short level. You can do it in five minutes. I think the ant lions are the worst part of Half-Life 2. Like, the ant yeah, lions and the that. game of, like, yeah. yeah, the floor is lava. I think that, that was oh, the most obnoxious the floor is lava, yeah. part. Yeah. Okay, you know, yeah. It's, yeah, that was pretty... When you, you have them as your allies, it's pretty fun. It would, the, I'll defend it by saying the first time I did it, I thought it was great. It's repeated playthroughs that it really got super tedious. Right, and I At guess that soured me on the antlions. <laughs> so seeing more content You've featured around antlions there, spawning you? really does not endear me to them. Yeah. The one ex exception, actually, I think is... Um, in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, the part where you can just, like, stand in one place and gun them all down. Yeah, I was down with that. <laughs> and kill their young. Kill them well, The Avalanche in, in Episode 2 were a little bit more... Like, they had, they, had, they had more interesting stuff. They weren't just one type of creature. They had the, the, the long-range guys, and they had the grubs. Well, Antlions in general kind of suck, because it's like... This weird addendum to the canon where, you know, yeah, all the all the friggin' monsters from Half-Life given our have, world, and then some bugs followed them, and they just sort of live here now, and we just, like, it's a level, so deal with it. And, and it just felt really weird, like, everything else was either, you know, Combine, which was Fuck. tied to the original uh, Zen Invasion, or you had, um, what are we doing? We're you have to, to put the cards on off. the antlion holes. Oh, that's yeah. right. Which, this area feels almost like you should... I wouldn't be surprised to find that speedrunners could skip all of this. Oh, I uh, bet. But it, it almost feels like it's possible, but I tried to do it, and it turns out it seems like it... It, it seems like it should be easy. And it always, an antlion hits you just before you get the door open and you have to start over and it's actually super annoying. And you can't actually get out. It's like games that do that, like where you can almost break the rules, but then like, no, not quite, it jerks you just short. That really grates me. One example is, um, yeah. as part of a revenge, uh, someone I know gifted me a copy of Euro Truck Simulator, and uh, One or I two. tried... I don't know. Uh, but I tried blowing through a toll booth, only to find they're completely indestructible. 
Like, I wouldn't have cared if I'd actually made a loss. That would have just been fun to me. Euro Truck Simulator actually looks like kind of an interesting game. I enjoyed a few hours of Euro Truck Simulator 2. I, I, I liked it. It's a re it's a relaxing There's kind not of enough ways open to world. Pervert it for me. Yeah. Like kind of the experience I wanted was like playing this kind of uh, slightly crazy-eyed trucker, like a little pushed a little beyond his limits. He's like he doesn't care anymore. He just wants to get the cargo <laughs> to the destination as fast as possible, and doesn't care who has to die to make it happen. And. I think it's completely unreasonable they would have made the game to cater to me specifically, but it would have been nice if, like, there had been, you know, more toll booths I could, in fact, blow through. The fact that if you, knowing that you could Grand Theft Auto your way and just, like, run over crap and smash stuff, it, it would... Is it not in there? ...means that even if you're playing the game properly, you know you're choosing not to be crazy. And that that feels right. good too. I know that's I know that's the primary enjoyment I get out of driving. It's not like I'm going along and I'm like, yeah, I could just knock that guy right off the shoulder. He'd roll down the cliff. And nobody would ever see him again. Nobody would know. But I'm choosing not to. Wait a minute. Is one of these not set up right? Where are they? Are they spawning? The one directly below Fucking you. Son of a bitch. Oh yeah, the car's in there, but it's not in there enough. This is the other reason I hate this level. Yeah. That worked. <laughs> Inexplicably. <laughs> they really just hated your parking job. Yeah. Or. I, I don't even know that this is a poorly designed level, to be honest. I think maybe I was just still mad at the antlions and didn't want to see them again. Yeah. You're just kind of sick of them and all their crap. Maybe if they were a new, if they were a new enemy, it probably. But then you know, then you've got the antlion burrow concept. Like you'd have to make another an enemy that works like antlions, and that'd be weird. But yeah. Once again, using health pickups to tell you, you can get on the other side of this fence. This isn't scenery over here. Valve is so good at that. Mm -hmm. And so many other developers are so bad at it. It's like, wait, where am I going? Oh, never mind, I'll press this magic button which puts an icon over the world that tells me where I'm supposed to be going. But this game lets you figure it, and you feel clever. And it's the same thing. I mean, you see a health pickup, you know that's where you're supposed to be going. But it, you don't feel, you don't oh, you can feel it. like it's giving you the answer, even though it is. And it lets you feel like you're being clever and paying attention. Hey Josh, ping the environment for pickups. So much is made of that offhand comment from Alex. <laughs> like, to the point where I actually kind of think people read too much into it. Which one? It got room for two uh, in there. It got room for two in there. Like, that this is a come on. And really, I think it was just like... Uh, you could easily... If there was a guy, nobody would read anything in, right. into it. If he was like, hey, is there room for both of us in there? Yeah, there I, think, guy I think guy, people are reading I don't know. I... <laughs> it as... You wouldn't, you wouldn't assume it was a come on, you would just assume he's being ridiculous. Hey, Josh, how big is your apartment? You got room for two in there? See, that kind of sounds like a come on to me, even if even if it's camps you're doing it. Alright. I would have settled for stairs. <laughs> yeah, I I I, I hate this I'm part. saying it's a gray area. It. Oh, this part this was actually the they patched this part. Cause there yeah, was a point in this, this where this part was almost all the way impossible. Uh, I've worked with electricity. Yes. Pretty sure the wire this part really fucking Josh! sucks. Okay, pro strat guide. First of all, run up to the elevator. Step two, waste all the flares and make sure they burn out yep. before you start the event. Then take oh, around start the event. five minutes and trap yourself behind a wall. Hey Josh, destiny much? Also, um, what? 
I'm Alex kind of made like an entire robot, like by hand that she kept adding parts yeah. to. What does she mean, like? I've messed with electricity I, I once like or twice. I like the subtitle there. Huh. <laughs> and then fighting. Free hugs. I think Alec. I think Eli made the robot and then she like fixed it, right? Or she like built it up, right? She added to it, but still, like, if, if yeah. you're gonna be doing, if you're gonna be adding bits to a sentient robot, you're probably pretty yeah. good with electronics. Why are these guys back here spawning up? No, Although I like the we're idea that the dog is really Alex. just like a head and all those other bits are just like hot glued on to the what is a really the core of what Eli made and he's just an abomination that <laughs> What has she done to me? Uh, sort there's of a not thing. a way to pick this up and then not It's like it. imagine you like had these giant styrofoam stilt legs and you couldn't feel anything through them, and you didn't have a lot of control over them, and you just, like, have to learn to hobble along as best as you can. I would have settled for stairs. Dog is to robots what, uh, the stalkers are to humans. This is really disturbing, all of a sudden. Okay, I'm gonna say, let's end this episode once wrap Josh up. goes up this elevator, since I don't know when it's supposed to end. And I don't, and All I don't right. know how long it's gonna take Josh to get up this elevator. So, this episode might be uh, hours long. Uh, the, the door uh, with the 30, bar over it. Thirty minutes. You know we could save now. This game does allow us to save wherever. What? That's ridiculous. The door with the bar. What door with bar? Oh, this. You looked at it I'm twice. I'm gonna load a mountain yeah. blade. No. Let's let's let's. It's a double okay, door yeah, with a wooden bar right. holding it shut. A double door, wooden bar holding uh, it shut. It's a steel door. Okay. Where do you suppose that okay, is? Okay. Now the first thing you got to do is put an explosive on the other side of the combine zombie you are hugging. Oh, I see. Actually, you already yeah. got to that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Step two is vomit uncontrollably for all the wild <laughs> cameras swinging in the dark that you're watching <laughs> on a li on a oh, here crappy stream. Come on, you. So what was the patch? You guys said they patched Whoa. this out. So this this used to be like an incredibly difficult sequence. Like, yeah, I remember hating it. Like they they did like uh, you know running stats of this thing. Oh yeah, they used uh, to have the depth map. Okay, the game just map. shows up. There we go. Okay. And it shows. Yeah, like, they had to the, look at the map of the game world. And they would show the red dots where people died the most, and over common death points there would just be this huge red blotch. So did they get uh, rid of the the big stand off here? Or? Nope, never mind. They just they balanced just, uh, it. A little bit different. it. So I this think is kind of what shorter. I was. This is kind of yeah, what I was talking about with really this long. being the uh, the Left for Dead area. First, we were in sort of an underground sewer or underground subway with a bunch of cars, which was very Left for Dead. But then there's this with the whole standing around crescendo event. Elevator, waiting for things to happen while monster zombies attack. Nah. Yeah, all this is yeah. missing is the woo Yeah, my zombie horde impression is on point today. Give me that explodey barrel. Oh, and it's God. weird to well, see good Josh barrel. pick up explosive barrel, I get the heebie jeebies. What's it's I weird know. to compare oh. this to like those games though, because both of them were made by other people, ostensibly. Like, Portal was made by the, the, um, Nervacular Drop team from, uh, I can't remember what college, and, uh, Turtle Rock are the guys that did, uh, Left 4 Dead originally. So, it's, it's weird to think, like, I see a lot of Half-Life 2 in those games, but it wasn't made by Valve. Yeah. Right, but the open well, structure Josh? of the community, of uh, their development community, is very, like... I, I tend to think that there's probably a lot of back and forth, a lot of lunches, a lot of sort of, you know, 
subtle alterations of your design uh, philosophy after you have the evil This could be bad. I love it when Josh said that. Oh, hey. Because it always is. That's open, unfortunately. All right, there we go. Close the door! Ha! Uh, yay! I only and died we win. three times? It, it, enough. You died enough times. We'll put it that way. <laughs> Look at the body language on Alex. Or not. I know. You know contrast whatever. this to Josh's body language. Ooh, that was close. We barely made it. I hope it's still light out, said Alex, as Gordon Freeman looked about the elevator like a startled bird, blood gooping from his face, <laughs> stiff back. <laughs> I'm just picturing the, the coffee guy from Mad TV. Like, Gordon, how long have you been awake? Yeah. 